cloning tonight and a stark truth. Life must end in death. And some of the hardest deaths to endure are the deaths of beloved pets. But what if we could overpower that death? Today, science has given us the ability to manufacture clones, exact genetic copies of mammals. And so tonight, let's meet a woman who made the decision to clone her dog and who says six figures is not too much to pay for it. Here's ABC's Dan Harris. You are looking at the moment when the love of Danielle Tarantola's life, in a sense, returned from the dead. How cute. Hi. Do you remember me? This is the culmination of a more than 20-year odyssey. The result of an encounter with the growing, high-tech, and highly controversial industry of dog cloning. Danielle's journey started when she was 18 and she bought a dog named Trouble from a pet store. The Trouble Wall. On her pillows, on her bedspread, and dressing him up in elaborate costume. He cannot have been happy when you put this on. Of course on. he was. He looks very, very handsome. <laughs> you loved this dog. Loved him. Loved him to death. And when Trouble died when he was nearly 18. He was basically my son. So it was terrible. It was heartbreaking. That is when she took her love for her dog to a level some people might find truly bizarre. She reached out to an animal cloning company in South Korea, the only place in the world where you can get your dog cloned. She provided them with a DNA sample of trouble that she had banked when he was alive. The cost? $100,000, although Danielle, who had recently lost her job on Wall Street, convinced the company to give her half off because her journey was being chronicled by TLC for a show that airs next week. 50 grand. Did, did no part of you think, that's just too much money? No, I was willing to do it for 100. <laughs> I got a deal. <laughs> a few months ago, Danielle got a phone call from the scientists in South Korea. The surrogate mother of Trouble's clone was successfully impregnated. So, uh, just this morning in Korea, um, we've been able to confirm the pregnancy of Trouble. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> Weeks later, the surrogate went into labor in the middle of the night as Danielle watched yeah, nervously yeah. via okay. Skype. Mm -hmm. oh, how cute is he? <laughs> He's so cute. Bye, Trouble. I, mommy will see you soon. Not all clients are so lucky. Quite often, as in the case of this man's dog, the clones do not survive. Come on, puppy. Come on, my true love. Come on, my sweetheart. Wake up, wake up. And that is just part of the reason that the dog cloning business is now so fiercely controversial. John Westendick wrote the book Dog Inc. about the dog cloning industry, which he says is based in South Korea because that country has much lower ethical standards for the treatment of dogs than we do here in America. If you're a scientist in South Korea and you're looking to clone dogs, it's a much better environment. Yeah. This is a country where they farm dogs for the dinner table. Right, and so you can just, you know, rent, rent them from the farmers for use in the laboratory and then hopefully if everything goes okay, return them to the farmer where everything's not gonna go okay. That's right, in Korea, some people eat dogs and Westendick says some of the dogs who are used in the cloning process as egg donors or as surrogate moms are later sent back to dog farms where they are killed and eaten. Does that give you any pause? I did ask them a lot of questions about the surrogate mom and what happens to her and you know, was she treated okay? They told her and us that the surrogate used in Danielle's case, as well as all of the surrogates they use, are sent to a nice farm to live out their days. But John Westendick is not so sure. It sort of sounds like, you know, what you tell your kids when the dog dies, you know, we, he's gone off to this lovely little farm. He also worries it puts mankind on a slippery slope toward human cloning. You know, once we've cloned man's best friend, how far behind might man be? It seems to, you know, be tilting closer to that. That, however, is not an issue that appears to concern Danielle. Oh, you're giving me kisses. Just a few weeks ago, the clone arrived at Danielle's home in New York City. I said, he, I couldn't believe it. It was, it's amazing. Everything is the same. Everything, even his personality is the same. What Trouble used to do, he does. So his name is Double Trouble. Double Trouble, yeah. <laughs> First one's Trouble, second one's Double. She is convinced Double Trouble is very similar to the original Trouble, but the truth is 
there is no guarantee. You're not really getting your dog coming back to life. You're getting a, a genetic duplicate or, or a twin. What's special about your dog? That's the part that I don't think can be cloned. What about the complaint that this is all a ripoff, that you're not getting the same dog and you're, you're being charged an enormous amount of money? Right. Well, I mean, what I did, I mean, listen, what I did is definitely not for anybody, everybody to do. I mean, it was what I wanted, so it was, you know, what I did. Despite the criticism and the controversy, Danielle is undeterred. In the process of making double trouble, the South Koreans also produced a second clone. He will arrive at Danielle's house in weeks. She's thinking about naming him Triple Trouble. For Nightline, this is Dan Harris in New York.